Greetings, viewers. Hey, thanks for joining me out in the shop today. Ready for the next fix and flip or fix and fleet? Or are we? Okay, now this vehicle right here was missing some pieces when I got it. Uh, it was sort of diagnosed with a timing chain tensioner gone bad. I've pulled the valve covers off myself and confirmed it has the timing chain tensioner on that side has gone bad. Now, I took all of everything I know about Jaguars and put it in this hand right here. Oh, I don't know anything about a Jaguar, but it's been fun playing with other cars. Uh, I know how to watch a YouTube video as well as make one. Some may debate that I don't know how to make one, but anyway... I went ahead and took the valve covers off. That was just some 10 millimeters, pulled the plugs, sprayed some juice in the cylinders because this car has sat for about a year or so. It has uh, newish tires, brakes, shocks, starter, a couple other things it had done to it. And then uh, this timing issue arose. Replacing the timing chain on this is a $1,700 to $2,200 job, according to the interweb. I don't know if that's true, but the chain don't cost that much, and the tensioners don't cost that much, and these chains look really good to me. I'm going to take the front off. Uh, I'm going to have you join me for the rest of this. I wanted to make sure that the motor wasn't just junk. Now, speaking of junk, you know how I like to get my cars. I like to buy them at junk price, and then sell something off of them, make my money back, and then I got a free car I can play with. Well, in this one, <laughs> if you find one of these for junk, it has the converters on it. Trust me, it's worth, they're worth uh, twice what I paid for this car. So we're just going to leave that at that right now. Uh, yeah, you got to be able to produce title and ownership and stuff to sell your converters. Don't worry about all that. But anyway, so once you do that, you have a free car and money to spend on it. Timing chain tensioners are not crazy expensive, but before I do any parts order, and I'm gonna pull this whole front cover off, I did drain the coolant. That's pretty easy. You just take the little uh, petcock out there, let the coolant drain. Valve covers, plugs, coil packs, a few bolts. You know how to do that. If you don't, you shouldn't be this deep into your Jaguar engine. All right, now, 100,000 mile Jag. Seat's a little rough. Armrest needs some attention. Uh, I took this off because this cable was broke and I wanted to diagnose it. That's like a $20 cable. All right, so the Jag is pretty nice. 107 thou, I think it had on it. Let's see, I got the door panel back here, a uh, bunch of the parts. I'm still waiting on a couple parts from the guy I got it from, but they're coming. Now, this is no pristine vehicle. It's got a little bit of rust, but the parts on it alone were worth more than I paid for it. The converters alone were worth more than I paid for it. But don't take your converters off if your state says you can't do that and stuff like that. All right, now the interior uh, obviously been used. All 107,000 miles worth of it. Uh, they broke the ashtray cover, wore out the uh, armrest and the cup holders broke and that seat's wore to fuck out. But the rest of it's really nice and a little bit of stuff can be fixed, especially when you're money ahead on your luxury car already so stay tuned here i'm gonna come right back and we're gonna start tearing this front apart i just want to do a little introduction here oswald is super excited slim is over there ready we already vacuumed it out and cleaned it up a little bit it was kind of trashed when we got it but all that to say i hope you want to enjoy following along with the next project which is going to be the jaguar xj8 this is an o2 model I don't have a name for it or anything yet. It could sell. Uh, it's a fix and flip or fix and fleet. We'll see. I haven't driven it. I don't know. Anyway, enough about that. We're five minutes in. Let me grab some stuff. We'll start tearing this front of the engine apart. All right. Now, I guess before I get too far into tearing it down, 
uh, I should explain to you what I've done so far. Now, just because it had sat, I sprayed some uh, WD-40 down into the cylinder walls uh, just to give it a little lube. I took, because it was all I had handy, some uh, 8090 and ran it across these cams because they have a bearing under those caps and I wanted these lobes to be lubed up so that I could do my tests. Now I just took, uh, the intake was already off. I would not have taken the intake off, but he had something he thought was going on with the intake is why he took it off. Um, here, if you can see, yeah, right in there, this chain. See how that's loose and sloppy? It should not be like that. On this side, you can't move it, pull it, push it in any direction, either chain. All right, both of these are tight. That one's super tight. This one's super tight. These chains are good, in my opinion, uh, because even though this tensioner is farked on the end there, you can't lift this chain off the teeth by pulling it. And if this chain was wore out, you could raise it up off of the teeth. All right, now, best I can tell, the tensioner is out on the slack side of the chain. When the, you turn the crank, it pulls the chain. It pulls the slack part of the chain. It, it can't push this chain up, so it pulls. So here's what I did to test my valves for a stuck valve or a, uh, yeah. You can see in here those, the followers there, right? Yeah, those little shiny chrome pieces <laughs> that the, the cams ride on, your valves are underneath of those, okay? As I spun this engine ever so slightly, ever so slowly, I watched each one of those go around and follow the cam lobes up and down. So as the cam lobes came up, the followers came up. They're not followers, they're directly on top of the valve. I don't know what you call them, um, but your adjuster shims are under there. But anyway, I inspected all the cam lobes. They all look good. I inspected all of those little round chromey things and made sure each one, as I rotated this, followed the cam without any of them sticking open. Now, if this had interfered and brought a valve into the top of the piston, uh, it, one of those, would they would be stuck down. I don't think the spring can come back up if the valve is stuck down. But anyway, I also looked down through these ports where I still need to get some leaves out. It's clear and watched all these valves open and close completely on both sides. So that means all the intakes are good. <sighs> Hoping all the exhausts are good. So I wanted to explain all of that. Uh, now I'm going to tear it apart, confirm uh, which tensioner and why, or just order all the tensioners anyway and replace them all. I don't know, that's why it's tear down time next. So kind of combining the introduction uh, of the Jaguar and the first diagnosis of what is wrong with it. Now, uh, hopefully this isn't a bad one to fix. Uh, like I say, money ahead makes them easier to fleet but uh, also when you uh, have a good deal and get a car running well that's worth way more than you paid for it, it's hard to keep them sometimes. But it's also nice to keep them sometimes. That's why it's a problem for me. Anyway, here we go uh, with the take apart of the front. And like I said, I've already drained the coolant. I'm gonna take everything off of the front. I, I wish I had somebody here to help me get this hood off of here, but I don't. And it's big and awkward and I don't want to fuck it up so I'm gonna leave it on for right now and we'll just do things from the side it's mostly just gonna be me saying take these bolts out and then waiting so anyway enough about that let's get going 
Okay, well, I'll try to move you around as I can so I'm not blocking everything. Mainly start out with take these hoses off. He's got some really strong clips on them. Uh, so far, all the wires I've unplugged have come apart pretty easy. That's been nice. I struggle with those a lot. Ah. Alright, but now I have... Um, ooh, that plug's a little crispy looking. But I have all the pieces now. Uh, was missing a few, but now they're all here. So even if I did do, or they did do damage to the valves, I think this will still be a car worth fixing at this point. So we'll find out. Add the extra option, fix and flip, or fix and fleet, or fix and junk. I've uh, spent money fixing junk before. I'm going to loosen up the hose clamp here and here and on this bottom hose and take it all off of there. All right, now I got that top and bottom hose off, or the radiator hoses. They both hit the radiator fairly close to the same place. Anyway, left and right, got those off. I'm not sure this needs to come off. I'm going to pull the fans out of the way right now. There are a couple of 10 millimeters here, and then they just slip in at the bottom. There are two plugs and some, uh, fortunately, zip ties on here for me to cut. So I'm going to get the fans pulled here real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, that comes out pretty easy. Uh, just lifts right out with those two bolts out. I put a board in front of my radiator because I don't want to pull it, but I don't want to punch it either. If anybody knows a more definitive way to tell me if I have a bent valve before I get it ready and try to start it, uh, yeah, let me know. But otherwise, I'm getting ready to take this front apart now. The next thing's going to be getting the crank bolt out. So let me get a look at that and I'll be back to show you what I did there. All right, now to get in there and hold the crank pulley, harmonic balancer, whatever you want to call it, so you can get this giant oops, nut off of there. Uh, there are notches or slots in the crank pulley. This is a tool I made that used to have four teeth on it and I used it for uh, Toyota 2.4 timing sets. The spread on these is just under three inches. They are about inch and a quarter wide each. That's about all you should need. Oh, the whole tool, uh, about two and a half inches deep. You could go deeper with these but it would just put this further out because this bottomed out against the timing cover now i got to get my puller in there uh get hooked up to that and pull that off let me tell you that crank bolt bolt fought all the way but this is what it took and at this length you uh can brace this on the cross member in the front and it'll hold it just fine total length of the tool here just over a foot long now, I just made this out of scrap I didn't pick these measures but I did have to spread these apart to fit this jag so now I have a custom jag tool all right now if you look right down there you'll see my puller is on there uh, there are two bolt holes in that pulley. One of mine stripped out when I first tried to pull it. I had to get down there with a tap and tap a new hole and use a larger bolt on one side. Now I was really cranking on that trying to get it to break loose just like that bolt. Man, I don't want to give up. So what I'm doing, I'm spraying it. I'm putting it under tension. I'm going to tap on it. I'm going to put a little more tension on it, and I'm just going to leave it because uh, your project car shouldn't piss you off. <laughs> and this is really starting to get on my nerves. I'm glad I got the bolt out. 
I'm glad I had a tool half made for that. Now it's custom made for this. And I really hope that everything's fine in that head, but that's all yet to be seen. So, thanks for joining me for Project Jaguar today. Uh, I don't even know, that's not what I'm gonna call it. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's hot as anything today. Oswald over there, he is chilling. Big fan is on, and yeah, it's hot. Uh, yeah, so that has nothing to do with the Jaguar. So diagnosing the timing, uh, getting it apart to confirm, uh, part one, I guess, because, yeah, I'm going to have to come back and I'll just do a quick rehash, but I don't want this to get too long. So we definitely diagnosed the loose chain, and now, like I said, it's on the pull side, so when you're cranking the engine around, it is tight. I uh, hopefully didn't. Yeah, anyway, enough about that. I'm going to throw the blanket back over it, turn the lights off, and be done for now. Thanks for joining me and Oswald out here today with the Jaguar. She just seems familiar. Have a super great day. I love you. Appreciate you. Like, subscribe, comment. You know the drill.